Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verses 7 through 15. Psalms 57 through 15. Hear, O my people, I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifice or thy burnt offering to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the food, all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious Father, we thank you for nine wonderful years for both, for both VCF Tongdi Chan and VCF Inchan. I thank you, Lord, for the, the pastors, spouses, for the children, for the deacons, the members, the spouses, and children who have been part of the ministry in the past and in the present and who will also be in the future. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to encourage them and bless them, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for each one here tonight. And I ask that you just give us, Lord, your, your refreshing tonight. Give us attentive ears and hearts to receive your word. We ask that your angels surround this place and protect it, and that your Holy Spirit will fill this place, fill our hearts, and let us receive all that you have for us. For, Lord, your word is truth. Your word is our life. And Father, we come here to receive the words of life tonight. I ask for your anointing, Lord, to flow through me and that the word shall go forth, the rhema word, to touch each one here so we can be changed. When we leave this place tonight, we will not be the same. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I give the Lord a praise clap for God is good. And all the time. Amen. Okay, so tonight I'm glad that you came. It's a special special message that I spoke uh, to the evening service once upon a time, and then I I went to uh, Davao VCF Region 11 and also uh, to Corona Dal VCF Corona Dal. You know, right now in Mindanao there's a martial law there, so we pray for our brethren in the Philippines. Amen, and God will protect them. And I, I pray every single morning for them because I know that they need that hedge of protection. Surely God was with us and he protected us. But you know, when God calls you, he tells you to do something, you do it, right? Amen? And you do it without fear. So we went there without fear and um, uh, God surely blessed them. But this word here tonight, you see up on the board, it says principles of the kingdom, uh, financial freedom. Um, going back to the Philippines, I go there every, almost every year, and it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see uh, people living uh, under uh, very harsh circumstances. And you know, this is not unusual like for um, throughout the world, but God has given us assignment there. So we go there, we see people struggling through life. And we, we try to help out as much and encourage them as much as we can. Okay, uh, many of you are here because you're here to um, support your families back in the Philippines or wherever, Africa or wherever you may come from. And that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing that you're supporting your families. Okay, I want to say that. But let me tell you here that this word that I'm going to share with you tonight, um, 
it is actually, it, it's probably going to be like a three-day kind of seminar, but I don't have three days. What time does the sun come up tomorrow? <laughs> okay, we don't have that much time because I know you guys want to dance and all that and sing and do what you guys want to do. But to, I got to give you this message. Why? If you receive this, you embrace this word here tonight, things can change in your life. Why? Why, why can that change? You know, for the longest time, we blamed our environments, right, our, our, our governments, our economies. We blamed our parents, our grandparents. We blame all the bad things on everybody else, right? And that's why we are here today. Um, you know, I'm, I'm talking firsthand. You're hearing a message that's coming from someone that did not grow up where everything was all given to me, okay? It was, actually, secondhand, okay? You guys ever had hand-me-downs? Yeah, so I was in fashion if the guys that, had, that gave me their clothes was in fashion. Okay, 10 years later, but that's okay, amen? All right, because, you know, cuffs are going to come back. For the men, keep your cuffs. If you got cuffs, keep them, because it's going to come back in fashion again, right? Now, bell bottoms, I don't know. I don't know about that one, but, uh, and these, um, what do you call these, um, these platform shoes? Some of you guys have the platform shoes, right? I don't know if they're going to come back, but... Cuffs are going to come back, I guarantee you, okay? That's how things work. So we cannot, you know, we, we blame everyone else. We blame all this thing, and that's why the circumstances are, and then we continue to mire in this sadness and this, um, and, and, and all this um, grief, and then it goes on from generation to generation. Tonight, it's going to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. It is going to stop, okay? Because... God can do things. He can do great and wonderful things. He is, he owns the world, okay? He owns all the cattle on the hills, as Deacon Michael just said. The world is his. So our God is big. Our God is on our side, amen? amen. If God is on your side, who can be against you? Okay, so, you know, I'm going to give you some rah, 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 but I'm going to also give you some, because I was former cheerleader. No, I was not. I was uncoordinated. I could not do anything. Okay, I'm just trying to work with you. But work with me, okay, tonight. I'm going to give you the word, because the word, you shall know the truth, and that's the word of God, and the truth shall set you free. This is coming from a personal perspective. I don't have time to share my personal testimony, but I'm going to share you the word of God, which is most important, okay? So I want you to listen up. I don't want you to, uh, to, to stray and think about food and stuff like that, okay? It, it's not going to run away. We will not serve food until we're all done, amen? Okay, so let, let, let's hang in there. So Psalm 57 describes who our God is. He's a big God. He's a, he's a marvelous, wonderful God. God is bountiful. God is is infinite. God has all. This is his, okay? So he, think of that now. If you are a born-again believer, that's the first step. You got to be a born-again believer. Jesus has to be your Lord. You have to have said, Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Amen? And that's what Morgan did in Philippines, in Samal Island. I don't know if she remember that, but it was Samal Island, okay? And that's where we go every year to, uh, anybody been to Samal Island? Okay, two people. Okay, well, you, okay, anyway, there's an island, Samal Island, whatever, in the Philippines, and it's supposed to be a resort area, a beautiful place, but that's where we go, and then we have this, it's off, you take a ferry from Davao City, and then you go to this beautiful place. It's a gorgeous place, but that's not why we go there. It's because we have baptism, Amen. Okay, so the world is mine. That's what the Lord says in Psalm 50. The world is mine. He said he will not ask. If he was hungry, he, didn't, he doesn't need to ask us for food because he owns all the cattle on the thousands upon the hill. That's all the, the God Almighty. I want you tonight to be a Christian that's going to be strong. I want you to, not to be a timid Christian. I want you to be, you know the truth, so you stand up for the truth, okay? Now, you can also stand up for the truth. We can hold God accountable. Did you know that? He cannot go against his word. He's going to use the word against us to judge us, but we can use the word to say, God, you promised this. It's going to happen, amen? It's not it will, oh, if it's God's will, it's going to happen, and all this kind of prayer. No, it, it's got to happen. It will happen. 
not it's God's will. Okay, so don't be tentative. We need to be strong, courageous uh, Christians that you, you believe in what, what the Word of God says, and you're going you're gonna to have that confidence that, yea, verily, it is done. Amen? So I learned early on, Philippians 4.19, if you don't have the Bible with you, write this down, write it down, okay? You got your pens and your papers, okay? Don't, don't be um, chatting. Don't send any texts to anybody, okay? Don't, don't be like, uh, hey, you know, hi, how you doing there? Here's a picture of all the people with the T-shirts and all that. Don't do that. Just uh, write down the words and don't say, hi, Maganda, and all that kind of thing, okay? But my God, Philippians 4.19 says, well, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is wonderful. This is not a, um, uh, 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 something you put on the wall and you hope is going to happen. God promises to supply all your need. He's going to supply all your need. I was in a uh, transition in my life, in my jobs, in my career, if you will. And I said, God, you told me to stay in Seoul you are now responsible for my family. I, I told him that. Here I am, you know, who I am against God, you know. God, you promised me. You said that. You're going to supply all my need. You said that. You said that right in your word. You told me to stay in soul. You are now responsible for me. Because you know why? I need to get on with your work, God. I need to preach the word. I need to teach. I need to share the gospel of, to the world. You know, I can't be worrying about, people, about uh, feeding my family and then where I'm going to get... Uh, make ends meet and, and all this kind of stuff and beg. No. You are responsible for me, God. This is bold. Don't you think that's bold? Standing before God Almighty that he can just, boom, I'm gone. I'm, I'm like thrown against the wall, right? But I stood up. And you know what? He cannot back down from his word. He cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Let this sink into you, people. Let this sink into you very deep because I'm telling you, that the word of God is truth. And if you hold him to his word, he has to. He, he, well, he hasn't. He will. I, I mean, but here I am. I'm, I'm growing in my faith too. Just like you are too, right? We're moving from faith to faith. Not only from glory to glory, but from faith to faith. And then we need to experience that. And God has provided for all my need. And he will continue to provide for all my need. Because why? He's a big God. Okay, and that's a little thing for him to provide for my need. Amen? And for your need too as well. And so, oh, he only takes care of pastors. No, he takes care of people that trust in his word. If you trust in his word, he will take care of you. Amen? All right. So now I want you to get fixated here. I want you to get strong. Get stronger in your belief. Too often Christians have been bullied. We've been taught to be timid. You, you need to be humble. There's a difference. But not, not be scared. Not to be timid. And I'm, I'm here to tell you we need to be bold in the Lord, yet humble. Okay? There's a difference. Do you understand? There's a difference. Humble is trusting in the Lord and realizing that without Him I can do nothing. And that's what humble, humility is all about. But boldness here, courage is I'm trusting in the Lord. Um, we go out into dangerous places, like I told you. And we're going to go out there, not in, we're not timid. We're going there in boldness, okay? Boldness, because we're going to share the gospel in boldness. And, and things are happening around us. Not good things, scary things. But we're going out there in boldness. Amen? Because I trust God. I want you to trust God. Let's see here. The kingdom here. We're talking about doing kingdom work without hindrances and obstacles. How do we do kingdom work without all these uh, concerns and all that? Here it says in Matthew 6.30, and you heard this many, many times, Matthew 6.30 to 34. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which, is, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's kingdom work, right? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, to, for the morrow, 
For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Wow, that is uh, just so powerful words. But for some of us, we're not living it. We've been worrying and worrying and worrying and worrying. You're always worrying about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to do. And, and you're worrying about all these things, these things. But the Bible says, don't worry about it, but you're worrying. So how can you do kingdom work if you're worrying? I don't, I don't know how, because your mind is on the things of like, oh, I need this. Oh, please pray for me, for provisions, and all this kind of, you know, come on, come on. You're not a beggar. God's children are not begging. When you say, oh, pray for my provisions, you know what you're doing? You're begging. That's a spiritual, religious, not spiritual, it's a religious way of begging. You're not beggars. Christians are not beggars. So why are you worrying about things that God promises to provide for you? Why? That's the word tonight. We're going to get through it here. Each one of you can get this tonight. And then you're going to be someone different tonight. You're going to be someone, the head, no longer the tail. You're going to be on top, not on the bottom. You're going to be the creditor, not the debtor. You're going to be the lender, not the borrower anymore. Okay? And it's going to start now. Things begin in the spirit. God says... Let there be light. There was no light. Let there be light. Boom. In, in the spirit. In the spirit first. Then bam. Then there was light. Right? Then he says, let there be uh, fish. Or whatever. Ready? There was no fish. Boom. Then there was fish. Tilapia. <laughs> so, it begins in the spirit. So if you get this in the spirit tonight... You're going to walk out of here confident, okay? We're going to get victorious. We've got to get angry. Why? We've got to get angry because the devil has ripped us apart. He has ripped us up. He has ripped us up, and we have been struggling ever since. Generation after generation after generation. You as a believer, let me tell you here. You are, if you are first generation born again Christian, it begins now. The change begins now in you. Amen? Okay, so when, 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 you, get, when you get all good and, and people around you are also going to get blessed. Think of the Joseph anointing. Joseph was a, a servant in the house of Potiphar. Amen? He was working for someone. He had no rights. He was a servant. And and because he followed God, he was close to God, he was blessed, and, and everything in Potiphar's house was blessed. So he gets promoted, and he goes to the jail. And then God blesses him and everybody else in the jail. Amen? And God says, now, now it's time for a real promotion. And he becomes the governor of Egypt. And then all of Egypt is, so tonight is about this anointing here. You got this Joseph anointing here. You, one person, Joseph, right? One person made a difference for a family, for a whole community, if you consider the prison a community, for a whole nation, for a whole nation. So, I don't know. Some of you guys are already marked by God to be people that are going to be in leadership positions, maybe in governments. But, you know, if, if just your family is blessed, that's a good thing, amen? But if just your, your, your city, your village, your barangay is blessed, that's a great thing too, amen? Because of one person. So why couldn't that one person be you? Why, why couldn't that one person be you? It can be you. That one person can be you. So... This is not any motivational speech. You know, people pay thousands of dollars to hear what you're hearing tonight. But you know, what you, you know how much you get it for? Free. Amen? Hallelujah, right? Free. That's a good price. Because freely receive, freely give. 
Okay, so we're going to start moving on here. I hope your faith is beginning to stir. I want your faith to begin to stir. Let's get back to the basics. We've been thinking about too much about the world, about the world, about the world. Now let's get let's our faith increase. Let, let it go to the next level. The next level, because this is not open to anybody who are non-believers. Only Christians are going to benefit from this talk tonight. So if you're not Christian, you can become Christian. Amen? Because salvation is free too. The gift of salvation is a gift and it's free. So see how God works? Free. But you're going to get blessed here tonight because when you apply these kingdom principles, you're going to experience what I call financial freedom. The first step we got to do, people, is we got to get out of debt. Ooh. In Romans 13, 8, Apostle Paul writes, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loved another had fulfilled the law. We got to get out of debt. You were born debtless, right? When you were born, how many of you had a lot of debt when you were born? Zero, right? Okay, so somewhere along the time that you were born to now, if you got debt, it's because of you did something, right? Debt. You know what debt is? also says in, in Proverbs that in Proverbs 22 7 Proverbs 22 7 says the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender you are servant to the lender so you if you are in debt you're a servant unto the lender the person that's that's borrowing so if they want to charge you 18% they can charge you 18% interest they want to charge you 9.3% interest. They can charge you 9.3% interest. You are a servant to the lender. That's what the bar is. You know what that is? That's bondage. When you are in debt, people, you are in bondage. So you see right here, these, these things are strapped around you. You got these cords around you because you are in debt. And, you know, Bible already tells you, commands you, Oh no man anything means don't be in debt. But we're in debt, right? So we can be smiling, ha ha ha, but inside you are in bondage. And you know what? When you're in bondage, it is hard to do kingdom work. It is so hard because your mind is thinking about all these things here. Let me tell you, being someone in debt. I know what it is. It is a heavy burden. But when you get out of debt, again, from personal experience, it is a fantastic, marvelous experience. It is just wonderful. Okay, so if you are in debt, get out of debt. Okay, and whatever. Don't be worrying about that beautiful vacation, okay, on a Caribbean cruise. Get out of debt, amen? Some people are worrying about going to Everland, but you're in debt. Why don't you just get out of debt first, amen? And so make it a, uh, uh, be, be um, passionate about that. Be passionate about getting out of debt because you don't want to be a servant unto anyone because God made you free. You are free in the Lord Jesus Christ. So why you want to go back into to, to, to this kind of life here? So you can get out of it, okay? And we need, we need to just look at that. To be out of debt is to be godly, okay? If you can think that way, if you can think that. And uh, one of the uh, things that I, I, I counseled my son and my daughter, his fiance at that time, I said, don't, don't ever get into debt. Um, don't, don't, don't come up with a fancy wedding and all that and go in debt and then for the next five, 10 years or whatever, you're in debt because of this wedding that nobody cared about. Who cares about that ice sculpture? You know what I mean? Because that ice is going to melt. Amen? And then it just disappears. So I said, don't get in debt. That's, that was one of, the, one of the teachings I gave him and her. And by the grace of God, they're not in debt. Okay? So we don't need to be in debt. Because God didn't, uh, when you were born, like, make you in debt. Okay? So get out of it. And be, uh, be violent about getting out of it. If you're going to be violent about something, be violent about getting out of debt. Because it's going to clear you. Now you can be, you can get this freedom here. Because it's mental ang anguish. I know, I know, I know how, I know, I know that feeling, okay. And I don't like it. I never liked it. It's 
con continuously. It's, it's, it's constant. Every way you look, you look left, you look right, you feel it, you sense it, and that's heaviness. So we're going to do that, okay? Men and women of God, we're going to get out of debt. If you're out of debt, stay out of debt, okay? There's a, uh, a lie from the world, the lie that the world's saying that you got to build up your credit and then get into debt. And no, you don't need to build up your credit, okay? Uh, th that's part two sometime down the road. I'm going to teach you about that you don't need to be in debt and all that kind of stuff. Now, am I against credit cards? No, I'm not against credit cards. You, you just go ahead and then go pay them off, amen? Pay them off at the end of the month or whatever it is. Because sometimes you're not going to be carrying around this cash, right, walking around there, and then, you know, when, when you buy your, your food or your dinner, oh, okay, here, here's all that, you know. So credit card, you only get one thing, but uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating, and I'm not against credit cards either. But that's, that's point number one here, okay? Um, be, be violent. Be violently, uh, just hate it. If you can hate it like sin, because it keeps you in this, in, um, uh, under this, in this bondage. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, Pastor, how do I get out of debt? How do I get out of debt? Okay, um, let's go to Malachi. I heard this before, Pastor. I heard this before. Just go to Malachi chapter 3, okay, verse 8. I know what you guys are thinking already. I know what you're thinking. Okay, will a man rob God? Yet... Ye have robbed me, but you say, wherein have ye robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. God says, test me. Test, prove me means test me. Now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if it, I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay. Um, we, we're learning insights in here. I know, how many of you know Ilongo? Who knows Ilongo? Okay. When you say a robber in Ilongo, that's a bad word, right? I didn't know that, man. Oof. I didn't know that, man. I didn't know that. I was in uh, Corona Doll, right? And it says, all you robbers, come up here. But if they translated it long ago, the pastor said they would have killed her. But anyway, that's besides the point. Okay, so he says, are you, uh, will you rob the Lord? Okay, you can rob a house and get away with it, but you cannot rob God and get away with it. And he says, how do you rob me? He says, you rob me in tithes and offering. In tithes and offering. I want you to understand here, the Hebrew for tithes um, also means 10%. Somebody say 10%. 10%, okay? And then you get offerings, okay, which is above and beyond that. So Malachi is saying, well, God is saying, if you don't give me my tithes and my offering, then you're robbing me. And uh, why you want to rob God? Now, all of us want to walk in righteousness. We want to walk in holiness. Amen? But if we haven't been giving God his tithes and offering, then you've been robbing God and you've been walking in sin. So when you walk in sin, then that's not a good thing because you are robbing God. Amen? You see what's going on here? So all, all of us think, oh, well, I just want to do this and all that. But, hey, you know what? You can't fool God. You just cannot fool God. You know, we're not here to come track you down. I want you to take note of something here tonight. Two things happened this extraordinary that maybe Dick and Charles might know. What did we put up there on the screen during that time? Free will love offerings, right? How many of you recognize that? Well, how many of you went to the bathroom during that time? Okay, that's point number one, right? Most of the time... We will have, like the morning service, we will have the offerings, if you will, the tithes and offerings after the sermon. I did it specifically, I rigged it so it's before the service. See, I'm the pastor, so I can make the tithes and offering, the free will, love offering anytime I want. Amen? So Deacon Charles says, hey, this is all messed up, and all, thank you. 
Thank you. He just like crushed my heart because I thought I had a great plan. But I deliberately made the, the offering before the sermon. Why? Because we're not going to have a second offering. I'm not here to jerk your emotions. I'm not here that you guys are all crying and all that and give to the Lord, okay? That's not what we're here. I want you to learn the word of God. I want you to be serious about this. So you see, the pressure is off. There will not be somebody coming around with the bucket, okay, saying, oh, we're going to have a second, second offering because we want more. Now, now that you've been touched by God and, and you've been blessed, now you can give us more money. We're not going to do that tonight, amen? Now, some other night I might do it, but not tonight, amen? Okay, I did that deliberately, consciously. Because I'm going to tell you what, why I changed it to free will love offerings, okay? I, I got to get used to this. For the last 50-something years, I, I've been saying tithes and offering, okay? So now I got to go to a paradigm shift, free will love offerings. Doesn't John, it's not really um, K-pop kind of sound, right? Free will love offerings. Like I know Vise Minchon, you guys going to be doing that uh, break dance later on, right? But... Uh, but, it, but that's what it is. Why? And I'm going to show you. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, 5. I'm going to go back to Malachi, okay? But Deuteronomy 12, 5. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose, out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation, shall you seek, and thither thou shalt come. And thither you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and heave offerings of your hand and your vows and your free will offerings. Somebody say free will offerings. Okay, I added in love because everything should be in love. Amen? So free will, love, offerings. Amen. And you heard it first in VCF. They get all these churches throughout the world said, yeah, I made this. They made it up. No, no, no. You heard it first at VCF. Free will, love, offerings. Amen? Don't, don't make me break dance, okay? Okay, so anyway... So anyway, so he goes on in Deuteronomy. So you see that this is free will. This is free will. And I, I'm going to explain what free will love offerings is. Let me go to uh, Matthew 22, 17. I'm going to put this all together, okay? Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? They were testing Jesus, right? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and says, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money, and they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Uh, VCF, we all pay our taxes, amen? <laughs> Give unto Caesar... What is Caesar's? Amen? So we pay taxes. Amen? Yes. Right? You guys getting me worried, man. You're getting me worried. Because we got to walk in righteousness. Amen? Okay. April 15th, next year, 2018. Remember that day. Hallelujah. Okay. So... He says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Okay, we got that one, right? But it says, give unto God what is God's. There's like three times when this thing is going to come up in the Gospels. I took Matthew. You know why I took Matthew? Because like Matthew is like the first book in the New Testament, right? I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Mark was probably the first one. Okay, I got it. All you scholars. I know you guys are technically right. But I used Matthew because... It's like the first book in the New Testament, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? So Jesus is saying, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Give unto God what is God's. Okay, so what is Jesus referring to? He is referring to the Old Testament. You got to give unto God what is God's. That's what he's referring to. And people say, well, hey, that's, you know, this Malachi and all that, that's Old Testament stuff. Jesus is telling that guy right there, the Sanhedrin or whoever that guy was, the Sadducee, give unto God what is God's. Who is he referring to? He's referring, what is he referring to? The Old Testament. 
I showed you in Malachi. I showed you in Deuteronomy that there, there is tithes and offering. There is that precedent. So now he's telling them, you need, that's who you need to, you, you give to him what is his. Amen? So we see here that even though Malachi is in the Old Testament, Jesus also refers to it in the New Testament. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pastor. This is legalistic. This is legalistic. And you know what? I agree with you. I agree with you. It is legalistic. We don't give tithes anymore. We don't have to give tithes. If you're Jewish, you still have to give tithes, okay? Because they're still going on the Old Testament. But uh, New Testament, born-again Christians don't have to give tithes. Amen! Okay, because we don't want to be legalistic. We don't follow the, 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 the Ten Commandments anymore, right? But wait a minute here. We're talking about now something here that what, what we didn't understand is that we still need to give God what is God's. I'm going to tell you what to give God. I'm going to show you in the scripture what that means about giving unto God what is God. For you New Testament believers here, born again believers, tithes is just a reference, a, a rule of thumb, we call it in English. Just so you understand, you know, people say, how much should I give and all that to God? That tithes, which is 10%, is just a rule of thumb, okay? Because we live in the dispensation of grace. That's what we live in. So we are not obligated to give tithes. Okay, as a pastor, most pastors are not going to preach this because, man, it's like, hey, man, I don't, don't want to give this up, man, because I want the tithes to keep coming in. But I'm telling you, believers, we don't have to give tithes. It's just a, a, a frame of reference. You know, okay, how much should we give God? Okay, let's give 10% and keep the 90% or whatever it is, right? Throw that out the window. You know why? Because we are in the dispensation of grace. You give to God whatever you want to give. If you want to give 15%, give 15%. If you want to give him 20%, give him 20%. Um, I heard of this one um, billionaire. He gave like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90% of his income to God, a Christian. So there's no limit. Why? Because... We're not under the law anymore. We don't have to only give 10%. That, throw that out the window. That's just a frame of reference. If you want to give 10%, you can give 10%. You want to give more, 15, 20, 25, go ahead and give 10, 20%. But I'm going to tell you here uh, what, what to do with it. So here we see here now that um, if we don't obey God, if you don't give what uh, give to God what is God's, what's going to happen is in the spirit world, there's some, something called the devourer, a devourer, okay? And this, this is a spirit. And this is a spirit of devourer. You go back to the Malachi. Um, when, you, when you give to God, then there's going to be a supernatural hedge of protection, okay? That's what we need. He says, now I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Okay, and whatever, um, but you understand what that means. It doesn't matter, really, how much you make. Okay, it doesn't matter how much you make. Because if that devourer is in your, attacking in your life, that devourer is going to eat up. The more you make, the more that devourer is going to eat up. Just think of a locust that is going to eat up. You will not have protection if you're not giving unto God what is rightfully God's, okay? You're not going to get protection. No matter how much you work. And that's why a lot of people work two, three jobs. They get these side businesses and all that. They can never meet ends. Why? Because the devourer uh, is in their lives because they have no protection. And once you don't have this protection, then um, it's miserable because you can be totally devastated. And some of us have, have experienced the devourer. I've seen where... First generation, people have made like in millions of dollars. I don't know what that translates into pesos or one, but millions of dollars, they have lost it in their generation. I've seen people that made millions of dollars in their generation 
when they pass it to the next generation, that generation uh, lost it all. They lost it all. Because this devourer came in to their lives and began to eat it up. The importance of giving to God what is God's is God now is going to protect you. That's what we need. Okay, that's what we need is this spiritual protection that only God can give you against the devourer. And the devourer, if, he's, if there's no protection, he's free to come right into your fence, into your, into your house area, into these things that you have. And it can go on from generation to generation to generation. Some of you are victims of this devourer. And let me tell you, he is vicious, he is merciless, and he will not spare. He doesn't care, okay? He doesn't care about your situation. How are you going to protect your family? How are you going to protect yourself is, is give to God what is God's. I got to move on. We need this attitude when we give. In Luke 6, 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your, into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, withal shall be measured to you again. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, the apostle Paul writes, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed it in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have in all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. God cannot be mocked. So, if your heart is generous to God, the one who owns all the cattle on the hill, he's generous to you. If you are tight or very, um, like, sparingly you give to God, hey, you, you, got, you, you have everything available to you, then, then you get what you sow, okay? So the problem is some of us have been very tight with that because we've all been calculating. We've all been thinking about this. See, God's economics is, 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 is supernatural. Uh, think about that woman who fed the man of God, Elijah. She had one last meal, right, flour maybe, and oil. And she was going to eat that, and then she was going to, and her son, they were going to die. Well, that sustained them throughout the year, right? Or whatever, throughout the drought. It kept coming. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. Believe me, it's supernatural. This is not, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in the, in the financial world. So all you accountants, you're looking at me and like, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I would say, I don't know what I'm talking about, except the word of God is saying that. So when you sow generously, this is based on your, your love and your affection for the Lord, and you want to just give and pour into, uh, give to God, just give Him. There's no limit, okay, because we're not under the, the law anymore. We're under the dispen in the dispensation of grace. So we can give Him more and more. And I'm talking about not just spending it in ourselves and, you know, and taking care, I'm talking about giving and in, sowing into the ministries so that um, you're giving it to God so it can be used for God's glory to spread the gospel throughout the world, okay? When you do that, you have protection, and then you have God's guarantee if you sow uh, generously, he's, you're going to reap generously. That's his guarantee. He says, see if I will not open up the heavens uh, and pour out my blessings into you. So why wouldn't we want that? You know, for the longest time we thought, wow, I got to take care of this person and that friend, my family and all that. Hey, you know what? If you're working from a, a position of uh, not having not versus a position of having, it's better to have been a posi position of having, amen? When, you, when God bless you generously, he knows your heart. He knows you want to give. 
That's why you guys, are, many of you are here today. Because you want to give and take care of your families. Amen? He knows your hearts. So why don't we be in the position of plenty, not because we are greedy, but because we're serving our Father in heaven who has plenty. And he wants to give us plenty. He can give us plenty. Amen? But he's testing our hearts here. Many of us have failed the test because we've been very calculating. We have been sparingly. We've been using the calculator and all this. And you know what? Some, some of us have been cheating and robbing God. And when you do that, you need to repent. You need to confess your sins. You're not, you're not getting away with anything because you cannot hide from God. Impossible. You can hide from man, but you cannot hide from God. And God is going to bless you. Hey, He's proven it. He's shown that the world is mine, he says. All the cattle upon a thousand hills, that's all his. That's who we are serving, this magnificent God. When you give, don't just give emotionally. Don't just give one time. Oh, tears coming out. Oh, pastor gave a great sermon. Oh, I'm going to give. And you give one time, and then the next time it's like, when it's uh, time for free will offerings, the next week, love offerings, is like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, right? All of a sudden, oh, you missed the, the bucket and all that. No. When you purpose to give God, you say, God, I'm going to give you. I'm going to be faithful. So, okay. You know, we got whatever God has given us. You purpose to say, okay, this is what I'm going to give you, God. And then the next month ought to be the same. In the next month, and the next month, and the next month. You, you understand? And then you're going to find something out that God's economics is different. It, it's so different. And, and, and you're going to say, you know what? Now I don't have to worry about these things. I'm beginning to worry less and less and less. Because the more I give, the more I get. Because he has uh, prevented me from this devourer that has been coming and attacking my life up until now. I now have his supernatural protection. You know, I'm not coming from a generation of millionaires, okay? It started in my generation, like in this family, okay? You understand? So now I can be eterned, eterned, because I've learned this principle, and I'm sharing this with you. This is kingdom principle. You can turn right now. Let me get to the conclusion here. You understand about purposely giving, right? When you, when you commit to God, you're going to give him. Don't, don't, don't give out of emotions and then, then you can't give in the next week. Make sure you're going you're gonna to be consistent and faithful. God is faithful. You be faithful. Amen? Okay. And here's my conclusion here. In Psalm 37, 25, coming from the psalmist, he says, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Verse 26, he is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. Okay, some of us have children, amen? Ch children are like the next generation. And this man here, the psalmist, whoever the psalmist is, is saying, I've been young, and I've, now I'm old. So what he's trying to say is that through years and maybe decades or whatever, he has, he has observed this truth here that every man and woman that was walking in righteousness, the children were never beggars. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about here. This, this new anointing here, this new, the new life here begins with you. Your children will not be beggars. They will not be beggars. Amen? They will not be beggars. You know, we do pray for our, prayer, uh, uh, our children. We continue to pray for our prayer, uh, children. But God promised me my children will not be beggars. They're not going to beg. They don't need to beg. Because the Bible says that, that we don't need to beg. Amen? Because as long as I walk in righteousness, my wife and I walk in righteousness, we do what we need to do. And when it comes to financial area, we give to God what is God's. I don't have any worries, not only for myself. I'm not worried about only my wife and me and all that, okay? But my kids, my children, right? I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my children. 
And they, they got years, decades, a lot more, by the grace of God, if they live to another 60, 70, 80 years, they, they can live that longer. They will never be beggars. And your children don't need to be beggars, amen? Because that blessing is going to flow. The anointing will flow from the top. And it'll go down to the children. So the children are going to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we as parents need to teach our children about the kingdom principles so they can, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not done yet. Because in Proverbs 13.22, Proverbs 13.22 says, A good man leave it an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Children's children in English means what? Grandchildren. Wow. Think about, think about this here. We're thinking about one generation, just us getting, it, getting through. Amen? And now we learn that as we are moving in this kingdom principle here, we have financial freedom, but then our children also are going to be blessed. Amen? But then God now is saying, I'm going to extend that a little bit more here to your children's children, which means your grandchildren. How many grand grandparents we got over here? Amen? Hallelujah. Don't, don't you think that's a good thing that our grandchildren are going to get an inheritance? Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thing? It's because you are walking in righteousness. You are applying these kingdom principles right now. Don't only think about your generation. Think about the next generation. And then, on top of that, the third generation. Amen? So as you teach your children that, you see now righteousness can continue. You have started a new, uh, new legacy. It begins with you if you are the first generation Christians. Okay? So now your children are going to be blessed. And you teach your children, but you know also your grandchildren are going to get an inheritance. Amen? And then... If you teach your children, their children will be blessed, and then their grandchildren will be blessed. So you go generation to generation to generation, and at a certain time, Jesus will come. But you know what? As believers, we don't ever have to live defeated anymore. It can stop right now. Okay, so I'm going to stop right now. I have a lot more, but I know there's too much going on tonight. But I hope you got tonight. You got the, the nuts and bolts. You got what you need to, to begin. Uh, maybe later on we can have more teachings and all that. But tonight, I just needed to share that with you. Because the word is truth. The word is true. This is not fantasy. This is not something I'm just trying to encourage you and all that. This is the truth. So you want to take care of yourself? You know what to do, right? At the same time, your children are going to be blessed. Amen? And then your grandchildren, your children's children are going to have this inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God Almighty, for your word. Tonight, there will be financial freedom. People will be in liberty. For we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. So I thank you, God Almighty, that tonight is the beginning of a new legacy right now in Jesus' name. Father, we do repent and confess if we have been if we're wrong to you. And Father, you know our hearts, but Lord, let us get right with you. And tonight is going to be the beginning, the beginning, Lord. So next year, Lord, we're going to have some testimonies about what you did, not what anyone did. You did what you did. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And give the Lord a praise.